So I uh, now have the pleasure to introduce Chi Cheng Kao to talk about energy research at SLAC. Dr. Kao has been the director of SLAC since 2012 and is also a professor of photon science. His research focuses on X-ray physics, superconductivity, magnetic materials, and the properties of materials under high pressure. So welcome Dr. Kao and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, giving me a chance to talk to you. Looks like you guys are having a lot of fun already. We're doing uh, our best. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this is really an unusual time, right? Uh, so I'm actually in the lab now. We try to bring the laboratory back in operations. Uh, uh, we're about a third. It, uh, people are now back, back at work now. The re research actually started now, so. I hope to see you at uh, some point in the lab. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so I thought I used the uh, uh, 30 minutes uh, time or so we have to uh, introduce you what Slack is and what um, uh, a DOE lab uh, system is, and also uh, give you the example of growing energy research program at Slack. And then I end with uh, opportunity for you to get involved more at Slack. So most of the people probably never heard of uh, DOE labs. Uh, DOE, uh, when people think about DOE, right, uh, they think we do a lot of energy, but uh, the DOE mission space, if you look at it, there are four primary mission space, it started with national security, because the system was built after World War II, right in the middle of World War II, uh, so DOE is the steward of all the nuclear weapons for United States, right? So how design the weapon and steward the uh, uh, weapons and materials. And then uh, DOE is also the largest sponsor of physical sciences. So like Slack uh, is one of the DOE labs where we build large accelerators uh, for people to utilize, right? The things that you cannot build by either company or universities. And then there's something about energy. DOE actually does do some energy re research. Uh, that started uh, probably during the oil embargo in the 70s. That's why the name got changed to the Department of Energy. That's actually very relevant today, of course. And then DOE has another big part of the mission is clean up the legacy waste. Because during World War II, when we uh, had to uh, purify, concentrate isotope for the bombs, there's a lot of the chemical processes used and a lot of the waste are still, still sitting in the tanks across the country that cost billions of do dollars a year just to keep them safe. And so uh, to all together, you can see the, the budget uh, currently is uh, $38 billion now. And what's relevant to Slack is Office of Science because we funded primarily by our Office of Science. Our Office of Science budget today is about $70 billion. Uh, DOE also um, uh, doing things beyond these four mission space because the capability we have can be used for other things too obviously. So the X-ray facility at Slack has been used to solve protein structures, which then can be used to design drugs, right? The last couple of months, there are a few very important structures got solved at Slack. These are the spike pro proteins uh, and on the uh, SARS uh, viruses where that's a piece that attached to the cell membranes and opens up the cell wall so that the uh, genetic information from the virus can go into the cell. But once you know the detailed atomic structure of those spike pro pro proteins, you can then see how antibody of the drugs that you want to use, how they bind to it. Right? That become a therapeutic strategy. Right? We also have structures solved for the messenger RNA. If you uh, read news, uh, Moderna, Right, the uh, va vaccine being developed is, is, is a different strategy. It's actually put a string of messenger RNA 
from the vi 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 virus that produce the uh, spike pro protein, put it into your body. So your body then produce antibody, you have immune uh, system. And then when the real uh, vi vi virus get into your body, you will really have some immune uh, system to counter that. Right? So, so we do a lot of that kind of work uh, because the tools we have, right? And also a uh, DOE system is the steward of all the supercomputers in the United States, right? So you want to do modeling simulation on something very big, right? You, you come to use the DOE facility too. Because so this sort of is how the DOE system set up. There are 17 labs. Uh, you can see the, the map on the left-hand side give you a sense of where they are. And, and this is some, something quite unique in the world. I think if you uh, from Europe, you would know the CNR system in France, the Humboldt Society in Germany, uh, and chi China has the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences, right? All these uh, sort of large uh, uh, government fund funded research networks. Right? As we go into the uh, uh, future, and these become even, even more important than before because the things we have to do now are on much larger scale. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so uh, specifically about Slack then. Slack started in the, seven, uh, in the 60s in particle physics, but now we are a multi-program lab. We look at things from the smallest, like I said, looking at atomic structures or, or it deep inside the nucleus. We are participating in the experiment at CERN uh, to look at the Higgs and, and what uh, beyond the standard model. We look at the uh, largest thing in, in the universe. We have built telescopes to, to look at how the universe continue to expand and understand why, try to understand why. Also try to uh, understand where is, what's the origin of the dark matters that we don't un understand yet and anything in between. It's, it's, so it's actually very uh, flexible. We can uh, initiate any uh, new area of science we want to. Laboratory can invest in that to get them started. You can also see um, uh, there's a, oh, on the right-hand side, you can see that's sort of the distribution of fund funding. The to total fund funding for the lab is somewhere between five, six, seven hundred million dollars, depends on how many construction project we have at any given time. And the, the pie chart shows you the uh, uh, funding from different parts of DOE of science. You can see the biggest part is called the basic energy sciences, which is funds chemistry and material science and large uh, X-ray facilities that we have. And then uh, we have high energy physics, and then you can also see the sliver there called energy efficiency and renewables. That's where the, I mentioned before in the previous slide, there's a big part of DOE uh, funding in more applied uh, energy technology. And Slack and Stanford together, we started to make enroll in that now of, over the last five years or so. And that's a program being growing, which you will see some example late, later on. Uh, so we are part of Stanford. So, so Slack is operated by Stanford University University for the Department of Energy. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, collaboration between campus and Slack. It's two miles between uh, uh, the laboratory and campus. There's a, a, a bus that I take up and down. Uh, it's not most com com convenient, but it works. And a lot of students and po po post are here. Some, some of you, are, if, if you interested, right, you can see there are a few hun hundred uh, graduate students and postdoc working at Slack or on campus through the fund, fund funding from the Department of Energy. And we have a lot of joint centers and faculties. Like I said, the lab was built in the 60s. At the time, uh, it was the idea of, um, you know, we have uh, protons and electrons and, and neutrons and the question was what's inside? Like people always want what's the next thing, right? And so that was the time when the, the theory of quarks uh, was proposed, right? So a few uh, physics fa faculty said, okay, we need to build 
the highest energy electron accelerator where we can actually probe that, right? Like Rutherford did back in the old days is exactly the same even today, right? You would throw a very high energy particle to the target. If the target is uniform, the particle will spread around e evenly. If the par particle has a structure like atom or like a quark inside uh, protons and neutrons, then you will see an uh, angular distribution of the particle you send in get distributed, right? And it will be energy loss. So, so essentially what you do is you have a very high energy par particle hitting some, something. You have a very large detector that detects the thing coming from that collision and you analyze the position and energy of what comes off it. So, so that led to the discovery of, of quarks and then uh, several Nobel Prize winner uh, through, throughout the uh, 70s, uh, 80s. And from then uh, we build on top of that, uh, uh, the colliding beam instead of fixed tar target experiments. And that led to, so every 10, 15 years, there'll be one of these uh, billion dollar thing get built and you finish the experiment, you move on to the next front frontier. Now, by, and in parallel then, when in the 70s, early 70s, when Bert Richter uh, built uh, a sphere, which is a colliding beam facility, uh, two faculty from applied physics went, went to Burton and say, uh, uh, can, can we, can we uh, use X-ray generated from the storage rings from the synchrotrons because that is very intense compared to X-ray source at the time you can generate from uh, in the lab. And birds were fine, so they put a window in there, then they went to Sears and got, you know, build a woodshed. Some gra graduate student then actually built the first uh, sets of experiment in the 70s. That's what uh, SSRL, that's how we started to get into the X-ray business. Uh, storage ring uh, compared to if you have done X-ray diffraction experiment in your lab uh, source, the storage ring is a million times stronger. Imagine the kind of thing that you barely see or you couldn't see, now you're able to see it because we have the storage rings. Right? And, and with that, um, uh, 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 several Nobel Prize uh, came out of that, like I was telling you, that one of the very po powerful use the, of, of X-ray is to determine atomic structure of matters, right? In, in the case of protein structures, so Roger Kornberg and Brian Kobilka at Stanford sort of used storage ring to tackle the hardest structure they wanted to solve. And so every few years, there will, there will be a Nobel Prize because they, they actually solve one, one of the very important structures. Uh, so that sort of take us all the way up to about 2000. At that point, uh, the high energy physics collider experiment had moved on. The slack size is not big enough anymore to build the highest energy collider anymore. And that kind of experiment went to Fermilab, United States, and then CERN, right? So the laboratory need to find a new mission uh, for future. So next slide. <clears throat> So on the particle physics side, we pivot between Stanford and Slack with the funding from Fred Carfley, build a Carfley Institute at Stanford and Slack. So there are two buildings, one at Slack site, one on campus, and university devoted uh, uh, eight uh, 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 faculty slots and Carfully found, found Foundation provide an endowment. So that's how we got started to pivot from experiment uh, ground-based in the laboratory. We start to build telescopes and satellites so we can look into the sky because a space is in fact, is, is a much bigger accelerator than we can ever build on earth, right? Imagine uh, things close to a black hole, right? The, the, anything get close to the black hole, get sucked into it. And then the electron and 
proton in the gas get uh, before they get get exerted into it will be will be extremely high speed. That's why generating the gamma rays that we observe actually every second or so there's a, a gamma ray going through you know my and your uh, ba body. Okay, it goes it goes it goes right through because the energy is so high, right? And and that's how Slack started to to go into uh, astrophysics and co cosmology, right? We took our ability in building big detectors and how to handle large amount of data, apply them to looking into the sky. So that's a very big uh, as part of the lab now. As you see the pie chart about. 20%, 25% lab still. And so one of the most exciting things going on right now is the large synoptic survey tel telescope uh, that, that in, the, in the second pa panel. Uh, it's been built at, at Chile. Uh, it's a 3.2 gigapixel CGD ca camera, the largest CGD camera ever built. And it will look at the sky quickly every few days we will cover half the sky, southern sky. It will record 10% of all the known galaxy in the universe. And then we will take data for 10 years to see how things evolve in time. That collection of da data will be made available to anyone, anyone in the world to understand uh, dark energy and dark ma 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 matter. So it's a very exciting time. It will come online uh, 2023, right? It's almost there. So we have at the final stage of putting together the detector. Uh, early next year, I think the detector will be shipped to the mountain and on the Chile. Okay, next slide. So then, then um, uh, we then repurpose the LUNAC. So you see on the upper right hand corner SSRL, the, the yellow ring, right? Being, running since the 70s and have been upgraded as a very uh, upgrade three, four times now. Meantime, we are, are building using the LUNAC to build the free electron laser. So storage ring, you have electron going around, they eventually become equilibrium. So there's a certain uh, uh, fluctuations limit the size of the electron beam. Whereas the LUNAC, you can shoot the electron beam only once you can make that electron beam extremely bright, very, very, very small. So that then gives us the ability to build almost like a laser-like X-ray beam. Uh, it's way before you, you all were even born. Uh, when Reagan was the president, there's something called the Star War, right? That it tried to have a direct energy weapon to shoot down things in, the, in, in, in space. Uh, unfortunately, while well, is 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 coming back again, right? There's a lot of uh, 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 activity in the space, which is extremely important uh, for 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 us. And so, but that the technology for building FEL actually started way back in the 70s at Stanford uh, in the infrared on infrared wave wavelengths, and got extrapolated now to one angstrom. X-ray, right? So it's a it's incredible feast of technology and physics. So the FEF started to a um, uh, first commission in two thousand nine, almost ten years ago. Uh, like like uh, you know uh, introduction about me. I do X-rays, use X-ray to pull materials. That's why I came to Slack because I want to be uh, using the X-rays from the free electron la la laser. So the red part of the beam on the right hand side, the red part of the LUNAC was old technology, copper LUNAC, uh, that can fire 120 hertz. The peak power of the free electron laser is a billion times compared to the storage ring. Okay, so, so the numbers, right? The storage ring is about a million times on average in terms of intensity compared to your lab source. The APL compact them into femtosecond. All the X-ray now get into a femtosecond and spatially co coherent. 
So, so you have this peak power, power you, you hit some, something, if you fo focus the beam down, the thing disappears. But since it's so fast, the atom have no chance to move. You capture the structure before the material get destroyed. We don't think it yet. Right, so, so, so that, that's where the red part is. When I came, we made a proposal to DOE to use the new technology, the superconducting technology. Uh, so on the, on the blue part, on the left-hand side, uh, that's a, a million uh, hertz, a, a megahertz now. So it, it went from 100 hertz to a megahertz, right? So that means the average power go up by 10,000 times. Okay, so the power of, of, of this device is incredible. That uh, will allow us to do things that we can only imagine at this point. Uh, so LCELS2 um, uh, uh, is being constructed at the moment. It will come online in 2023 also. So there are a lot of things 2023 20, would, would, be, would be online as, at Slack. From study chemistry materials to study the universe. Okay, so, so let me, next slide. <clears throat> Okay, so let me switch to energy now. So, so there, there, the last 10 years or so, uh, as, as we start to build up the X-ray capability, we start to think about what else can we do between staff and Slack, right? Like I said, X-ray, the best use of X-ray is to determine structure of material of any kind, right? Also imaging, you can, you can imaging things you can actually make movies out of the things. So, so we start to bring people in from Stanford, also elsewhere, to look at scientifically what are the most challenging pro problem we can solve. And one of them is uh, how do we turn CO2 back into fuel, right? I ideally, what you want is all that CO2 in, in air, we can recapture them, turn them back into fuel again, right? Because uh, 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 liquid fuel has the highest energy density for storage. Also utilize all the infrastructure we have. So that, that was one of these holy grail got started. So there's a joint cent center for catalysis between Stanford and Slack. Uh, some of you will probably be involved. It, it's going after that. And then the other side of it is, is thinking about you have a solar energy being de deployed everywhere now. So a lot of electron be generated, right? So how do we use that electron to transform chemicals, right? So that's related, uh, if I right? So the thermal chemical catalysis, there's electrochemical catalysis. So the effort is a very big effort between Stanford and Slack, and we utilize the tools we have, also the uh, theoretical work being done. Um, recently, we start to get involved, uh, like, like I showed you before, there's a more applied energy side of DOE. What we realize is Precourt Institute and other energy research center at Stanford, there are a lot of people working on batteries. Since actually is good for looking at it, so we thought, well, that may be an opportunity between Stanford and Slack, right? So several uh, material science and chemical engineering fa fa faculty involved with Slack, looking at how do you build uh, the chemistry, new electrodes? How do you uh, use artificial intelligence to learn how do you do this cycling? Because all of these things are connected, right? Depends on the way you intend to use the battery. Uh, it may change the fo formulation you want, right? Actually allow you to see in real time how those things are happening, either looking at the structure or looking at images, right? So this, this work has, has uh, uh, taken off the last five, five years. There's a lot of, uh, of fund, funding from DOE, also from industry. We just finished a, a laboratory uh, building uh, two years ago, three years ago now. And, and there's a lot of lab space I devoted to, 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 to the, this work now, so we can actually do more. Next slide. Um, so, like I said, the the solar energies, right? So there there are real 
questions about can we extend the lifetime of a, a solar pa pa panel? Imagine you can extend the sol solar panel lifetime from 30 years to 50 years, right? That capital investment will be amortized even more, right? And, and so what people start to realize is, is the silicon is perfect, can last forever. The, the, the materials issues actually is how the silicon uh, 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 wafer attached to the uh, solar panel around it. It's the polymer, the glues, the, the contact, all, all, all these things, right? So, so this is a very applied work because you're really talking about how do you extend the lifetime of these things ba based on understanding of materials. And so, so that is, is the space we, we are, we've been working on for a while. You probably will hear more to, throughout the week there are also new materials, right? You probably heard about these perovskites, right? It has very surprisingly high efficiency, and we try to understand those as well. Uh, next slide. So newer things. So, so uh, D DOE, I think, uh, have put a new emphasis on uh, how do we recycle polymers, pla plastics, Right? There's a lot of them in the ocean that, that have been disposed. So the idea is, can we find ways to, to uh, 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 digest them or even, even better build them from the, uh, much more smarter from the be beginning so they can be bi biodegradable. Right? There's a significant fund funding in that direction now. Uh, we just started. Next slide. Uh, if you, the, the other thing is about water supply, right? You probably all heard about energy water nexus. I've right? been talk, talking about, been talked about for a while now. There's a new initiative from DOE to fund these things. Again, you can see we need new materials on the man, membranes, can make, make it very smart, right? You can do a lot of uh, fil filtering with very low energy. And this kind of research also relevant to pandemic. Imagine the mask that we wear. If we have membrane material can filter out mi microbes and other things, right? So this is a new area which just started. And so, um, so now, now goes, okay, so we can look at the material, people can make something. It takes a long time, for, right? So can we speed all this up? By, by factor 10, right? So, so there's a lot of work being done uh, by machine learning and do extremely high throughput, both experimentally or using computer. So we can actually accelerate the, this development. Next slide. Next, yeah, on the, on the biggest scale, right? You already seen a couple of week, weeks ago, uh, the, the, we have to uh, shut down pow, pow, power to a lot of people because when the temperature got really hot, we rely on too much on re renewable at the moment, the grid and the supply are not, not match well now, right? So there's a lot of what needs to be done on how to rebuild the grid that we have, make the grid uh, efficient in this new economy that we have with a lot of uh, uh, alternative energy sources. Next slide. Okay, so how do you get involved with Slack? Uh, in previous years, they actually did a tour at the end of the week that I would show, show you around to see all the facility we just talked talk about. So we won't have that. Uh, so, but there are a lot of um, things you can get, get involved through uh, a lot of activities. I think throughout the week, you will hear a lot of PIs speaking to you about the things that we're working on. The lab is, like I said, there's a lot of new opportunity for, for you to be involved. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, I think we have time for a couple questions. Uh, Mayank, you want to start? Great. Um, hi, uh, my name is Mayank Gerda. I'm an incoming uh, Sloan Fellow at the GSB. Um, and I think you partly answered my question in the last couple of slides. But just um, in terms of the issues in front of us, in terms of climate change and energy 2.0 and innovation, etc., what is the best way to get involved in a cross-disciplinary basis with the SLAC laboratory and the research happening there? 
because one of the themes from uh, Arun Majumdar's uh, talk was about accelerating um, basically commercial outcomes where the starting point is cutting edge research at labs such as, you know, such as uh, Slack. So what is the best way for graduate students to get involved in a cross-disciplinary basis outside of this course during this week? Yeah, of course? It's, it's a very good qu qu question. So, so Stanford actually has uh, activity relevant to this from the policy side to techno-economic analysis and to regulatory things that the, the government need, need to involve and then to the technology that we do, right? So pre-court is, is about as good as I can see in terms of try to connect everything, right? So probably pay attention to events there. Uh, I think one of the goal university tried to do, it, you, probably, you probably haven't heard, there's a reshaping, re-imaging re of the school, the earth science, try to pull all these things together in a more um, a systematic way than we have done be before. So pay, pay attention to, to that too. Great, if there's any way we can help, please let us know. Sure, sure. We have a couple of requests for a, a tour of Slack once we're able to do so. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we probably should think about how can we do some virtual tours. For, yeah, for a virtual right. tour in the meantime would be great. And uh, yeah, and yeah, once I think that's definitely something we would want to try to do. I mean, who knows when we'll be able to do in person events like that. But um, that yeah, would, that no, we nice. yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, we try to bring small group of people up now. Uh, oh, do you? Yeah, so so Kate, po probably do the fine. So email me afterwards, then we can see, can we assign some staff working with some of you, right? Uh, we, we, we can try to design these vir virtual tours. Great, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, definitely talk offline about that. Sorry, I got my timer going. Great, well, uh, if there are um, no more questions, we'll thank you very much, Dr. Cao, and um, thank you. it was great to hear your talk, yeah. it was wonderful. Yeah, hope to see you all some point. <laughs>